told the staff that they're required in here and they're waiting outside. Oh, good, show them in. Yeah, right. Oh, by the way, I haven't told them anything about what you're going to tell her about. How do you know what I'm going to tell them? Well, I do empty the waste paper basket for Mr. Gray. <laughs> <laughs> it came as a bit of a nasty shock to me. That is absolutely top secret. We don't want this to leak to the outside world. Mum's the word. <laughs> All right, you lot. Come in now, you'll see ya. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Mr. Uh, shut the door, Peacock. Yes, sir. Now, what I have to say is of the utmost importance. So gather close because I don't want to have to raise my voice. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely top secret. Last night, I was summoned to a meeting at uh, boardroom level, and we discussed matters that will have a far reaching effect on us all. I know what it is. We're going to declare war on Marshall and Snowgrove. <laughs> If you are facetious, Mr. Lucas, you can leave the room. Now, I cannot emphasize too strongly the need for complete security. And I cannot emphasize too strongly that if we hold this position much longer, I'll need an osteopath to put me back. <laughs> you get used to it with practice. <laughs> I must point out that we are on the third floor, so who from the outside could possibly hear us? Someone very tall from Lily White. <laughs> when I tell you what I'm going to tell you, you will all realise the reason for my concern. Well, get on with it then. Right. <laughs> this may come as a great shock to you all. Oh, oh blimey. <laughs> Perhaps you'd rather not tell us, sir. I wish I didn't have to. All right, then, I'll tell them. There's been a takeover bid for Grace Brothers from Lally's and Willits. <laughs> How dare you? That information was absolutely confidential. Well, you said you didn't want to tell them. I didn't want to, but I was going to. Lally and Willits, that's a Bristol firm, isn't it? <laughs> Never mind where they hang out. What's in the... <laughs> it's no secret that their, their pay structure is the worst in the trade. When they took over Cranbourne's, the, the, the whole sales staff left within a month. But even those who had been there 30 years... They were the first to go. <laughs> when is all this happening? I don't know, but there's to be a shareholders meeting in a day or two. Meanwhile, mum's the word. Well, that's all. Carry on, everybody. Just uh, mum. Right. Keep smiling, Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> It'll tear my heart out to see them go. What makes you think that you'll be staying? Have you heard something, Harmon? Well, no, just little bits that I pick up in the waste paper basket. <laughs> have you seen a list? Well, no, no, not exactly, but you know how Mr Grace likes to doodle on the blotter? Well, the day before yesterday, he drawed the man before the firing squad. Could you see who it was? No, he was blindfolded. <laughs> what makes you think it was me? The blindfold sort of stuck out there. <laughs> Oh, here's a job for you, Shirley. Adaptable girl wanted to assist jet-setting director of cosmetics firm. Must have a little German. I don't think I'm that adaptable. I think people are too fussy. Oh, there's one here for me. Glamorous personal assistant required by director of film company. Much travel, 5,000 a year. Oh, I say, 5,000 a year. No typing or shorthand necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Must be under 30. Oh, dear, just too late. <laughs> Anyone fancy being a barber's assistant with fringe benefits? <laughs> Listen to this. Organ demonstrator, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> the only job for which I seem to be qualified is... That of a chairman. <laughs> Company chairman? No, deck chairman. <laughs> oh, here's a job. Here's one for you, Captain Peacock. Wanted. Ex-army officer of imposing appearance. Used to rugged outdoor life. Must be able to get on well with Arab royalty. Oh, a diplomatic post. Well, in a way. <laughs> Dorman at the Dorchester. <laughs> Yeah, what we really want is one of them millionaires who's looking for a young girl Friday. Yeah. Or in Mrs Slocum's case, an old girl Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the 
There is one vacancy that requires to be filled between Mr. Lucas's ears. Mm. <laughs> Never mind, Mrs. Slocum. You can always fall back on your hobby. Mr. Humphreys, to what are you inferring? Well, you could open a pet shop. Oh, yeah, you could have a flashing light outside saying, if your pussy's in the mood, have it clipped and then shampoo. <laughs> I shall never get another job at my age. Remember, Ernest, Churchill didn't come into his own until he was your age. No, but he had the whole country behind him. <laughs> I've only got Mrs. Granger. <laughs> and she hates having me in the kitchen all day. She, she says that I make the milk go sour. <laughs> I'm sure we're all being too pessimistic. And apparently, they have to put the bid to the shareholders, and they might not agree. Uh, sorry to interrupt this jolly little gathering, but Mr Rumble wants to see you all in the boardroom. Well, he can wait till we've finished our coffee. Yeah, I mean, what does he want, anyway? Some scheme he's got to save your jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. The ladies and gents department is here for a top secret meeting. Uh, good. Uh, show them in. Yeah. This way for the top secret meeting. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, do sit down, everybody. Thanks. Have you got your pencil and notebook ready? Yes, Mr. Grace. Well, throw them away. This is top secret. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, that does bring me to my first point. Now, I want you all to listen very carefully. What I'm about to tell you is absolutely confidential. What was that? I was just, uh, I was just telling them that what I'm about to say is absolutely confidential. Oh, uh, you want me to leave the room? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. You told me. You could have some tea while we're waiting. <laughs> you will all be pleased to hear that young Mr. Grace is in a position to defeat the takeover bid by Lally and Willits. Oh, oh. Oh. Thank you very much. Yes, I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Yeah. Enough votes have been sent in to defeat the motion by post. Well, I must say that comes as a great relief to us all. Uh, unfortunately, postal votes do not count. The actual shareholders have to be present in person. Oh, that is a pity. It is indeed a pity. Because those that can attend are in favour of the takeover. And they will outvote Mr Grace, who will, as a result, lose his shares in Grace Brothers. What, what was that? You will lose your share. I haven't been getting it for years. <laughs> <laughs> the balance could be swayed by the attendance of just four more persons. Well, can't we get them here? They're abroad. Organ demonstrating. Here I come. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will all agree that Mr Grace has always been absolutely straightforward in all his business dealings. And he has come up with several straightforward, business-like solutions to all our problems. Mr. Grace? Huh? Oh, yes, yes. Ah. Ah. Yes. Uh, one, burn down the store, <laughs> take the insurance and start up somewhere else. Mr. Well, Grace! Well, it worked in 1928. <laughs> Two, uh, get the Mafia to rub out the opposition. <laughs> I got that one from Kojak. <laughs> Three, hijack Mrs. Willis, lock her in the safe, and throw away the combination. Hawaii 5 0. Four, <laughs> photograph my secretary in bed with Mr. Willett. Oh, they did that in Columbo. Uh, uh, five, the ultimate weapon, uh, photograph uh, Mr. Humphreys in bed with Mr. Willett. <laughs> <laughs> Program I've missed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have advised Mr. Grace that these are rather extreme measures, but he got carried away by reading Howard Hughes' life story. <clears throat> I've never heard anything so outrageous in my life. Uh, why don't you do something simple like put a ringer in? How do you mean, Mr. Harmon? Well, you know, like with the horses. I mean, if one ain't going to run, that they substitute it with another. You see, you've got four shareholders missing, so impersonate them. You've got a criminal mind, you have. <laughs> no, I ain't got a criminal mind. I mean, they've already voted that they just can't get here. It does sound more feasible than the other plan, sir. 
I see. Well, well, get on with doing nothing about it. Yeah. But, uh, well, hands up all those who are willing to have a go. I think I speak for everybody present when I say that we want nothing to do with it. And I am unanimous in that as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a hundred pounds in it for anybody who takes part. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I start, I want to emphasise that what I'm about to say is absolutely top secret. After he's done it, do you think he's going to self-destruct in a puff of smoke? <laughs> Now, we have obtained some background material on the absent shareholders. Now, the object is to choose which shareholders we can best impersonate. For which we get 100 quid. If chosen. Have any of you ever done any impersonations before? Mr. Humphreys has, but the case was dismissed for lack of evidence. <laughs> <laughs> I can do Winston Churchill. <laughs> he wasn't a shareholder. <laughs> I was once mistaken for a film star. <laughs> Male or female? Well, I was wearing my hair down, and from the back I looked just like Veronica Lake. In the front, Windermere Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Lucas. Which is one of the world's great beauty spots, Mrs Slocum. Well, uh, let's see what we have now. There's uh, Geoffrey Longman. He is 28, broad-shouldered, six-foot-two, blonde hair, blue eyes, wealthy yacht owner. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> You're not tall enough. I know, I just like the sound of it. <laughs> and, uh, ah, Andrew McNairn from Aberdeen, 45, landowner, ex-captain Scots Guards, moustache, dark hair. Scots, wa he wi Wallace blade. <laughs> Scots, whan Bruce has often laid. Welcome to your gory bed, or to victory. <laughs> ah, um, he has one ear missing. <laughs> Not for a hundred pounds. <laughs> uh, oh, Sir Richard Ryan, 65, 5 foot 6, landowner, Somerset. Oh, you could do that, Mr Granger. Somerset? Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, educated at Eton. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, I... <laughs> We'll let you know. <laughs> I think that's very good. Unfortunately, he has rather a lot of hair. And we'll fix him up with something from the wig boutique. Right. Mr Granger, you are Sir Richard. Oh, ah, ah, well, jolly good show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, calm down. You've got the part. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, oh, this chap's quite a large shareholder. Professional dancer. Oh, Mr. Humphreys does a bit of dancing, don't you, Mr. Humphreys? Oh, yes. The word versatile has been applied to me before. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, I must, I must stop you. I must stop you. He only has one leg. <laughs> <laughs> and he is from Nigeria. a one-legged Nigerian tap dancer? <laughs> Not with any degree of sincerity. <laughs> what about us women? Don't we have any shares? Well, uh, oh, there is the Stableforth family. Uh, Lady Stableforth is described as 40-ish, stoutish, not very tallish, uh, played hockey for Rodine. Well, I've done hockey. <laughs> uh, her daughter, Lavinia, has an equal number of shares. She is uh, 26. Jet-setting playgirl, known to her friends as Bucky. Yeah, one not ask why. <laughs> well, to judge from the photograph, it's because she has prominent buck teeth. <laughs> well, we sell those in the joke department. I'm not wearing joke teeth. That's not the problem, Miss Brahms. The point is, are you young enough to pass off as my daughter? <laughs> <laughs> One uh, doesn't wish to bring class into this, but uh, Miss Brahms has got a very definite Cockney accent, uh, which in itself is most charming, but uh, could she pass herself off as a lady of quality? My background might be ever so humble, but A can talk just as hoity-toity as what you can when required so to do, especially for Andred Nicker. <laughs> And whom is going to simulate my husband? Uh, <laughs> Lord Stableforth is about 55, a self-made man from the East End of London. Salvage merchant. 
He made a life peer for his services to the scrap metal industry in the vicinity of 10 Downing Street. Core blimey, Governor, you're a tough. I've got big ones, small ones, some as big as your head. Give him a twist, a flick of the wrist, and there swing him around. Yes, <laughs> Thank you, Captain Peacock. I hate to bring class into this, but you wouldn't last five minutes in Dockland. Mm. Very few of us would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid we still need a middle-aged Cockney to play Mrs. Slocum's husband. Mm. Here we are, <laughs> Rosie Lee, for Mr. Rumbold, I've spilt a drop in a saucer, so mind you don't get drops down your whistle. Perfect. What's perfect? The height, the age, the voice, exactly what Mrs. Slocum's looking for. What, him? <laughs> oh, no, I'd never marry him. I'd rather have Captain Peacock, even if he isn't good at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I could improve my performance if Miss Brahms gave me some lessons. Uh, oh, no, it's something you have to pick up with your ear. <laughs> You've lost me completely. <laughs> well, it's really quite simple. Let me explain. Now, what I'm about to tell you is absolutely top secret. Oh. And you have to... I'm sorry I'm taking so long. Take as long as you like, my dear. <laughs> Keep your chin up. It's not easy. Oh, shall I answer it? Yes, yes, do. I could do with a break. I'll <laughs> give <laughs> pacemaker a chance to keep up with me and most of us. That is bad news. I'll tell him right away. Oh, it's the chef and the waiter, sir. They were doing the lunch at the Brighton branch and their band's broken down. Oh, dear. Well, you'd better get me Mr. Rumbold. Yes. Uh, can you cook? Well, no, sir. No, no. What can you do? Well, I'm... <laughs> 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 oh, yes, Mr. Grace, I'll get on to it right away. Yes, sir. That's uh, one chef and two waiters. Well, sir, the store's just closing. I don't know who I'm going to find at this time of night, but uh, you can rely on me, sir. Somebody will be there. Well, it's no good arguing with me, is it? No, don't blame me, Captain Peacock. This shirt's even too small for me. You'd look ridiculous in it, wouldn't you? It is quite absurd that you should be the head waiter while I have to be a commie. I, I mean, I have the dignity, the bearing, the, the personality. But you can't get into the suit. Just look stupid. Well, I don't see why. I mean, in the best restaurants, you often see elderly men in a servile position. <laughs> Left at life's starting gate, while the young ones with the ambition and the drive get to the top. And your pinny's crooked. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the chef. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened, Fanny Craddock? I have just seen this menu, and it's absolutely impossible for me to do in the time allotted to me. The menus have been specially printed for the occasion. Yes, well, in that case, get the people that's printed the menus to cook the meal. Listen to this. Bisque de Marne, or gazpaccio, or smoked eel, and that's just for starters. Well, smoked eel isn't difficult. No, oh, isn't it? It is when it's been in the deep freeze. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> get a blow lamp to that, it'll be ready for Christmas. <laughs> and that's not all. Sole Veronique, followed by Duck Hall Orange, followed by Beurf en Croute, Followed by syllabus or, or Zabaglione, followed by my resignation because I'm not doing none of it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, it is too late to get another cook now, and the whole future of Grace Brothers is at stake. I'm sure you can do something. I mean, we're all in this together. You don't think I enjoy being dressed like this, do you? Well, I should think not indeed, and your pin is crooked. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling you about that, Stephen. In spite of our assumed position, Mr. Lucas, I will not have you addressing me in that familiar fashion. Don't worry. I won't be familiar with you anymore, sir. In fact, when we get into the other room in there, I won't even address you at all. I shall just go... <laughs> <laughs> and you'll jump to it like you never jumped before. I think we must be very careful, Mr. Lucas. If we do save the firm, some of our lives are not going to be worth living. My life's not worth living now. <laughs> my trousers are too tight and my potatoes are boiling over. <laughs> if I can't find a tin opener, it's going to be a nail and a hammer and two holes in a can of vegetable soup with straws for everybody to suck it up with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'd better see if everything's ready in the director's dining room. There you are. 
That's done it. It's <laughs> much easier Thank from the back. Oh, excuse me. These are the waiters, sir. Well, it was very short notice, only. <laughs> Somebody will have to announce the guests. Well, I'll do that with pleasure, sir. However, you can't do that. I'm the head waiter round here. We can't have a common commie with introducing the guests with a crooked pinny. Yeah, straighten your pinny. And your trousers are too short. If I lower them to the correct length, sir, it might lead to complaints of a rather more serious... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, they'll ride down with wear. <laughs> the guests are on their way up now, sir. Right, get ready, everybody. It's all right. I'll be over there by the door. Stephen? The sherry. One more insult from that man and these clothes are coming off. Don't start distracting me now. I'm very busy. <laughs> <laughs> there are three empty sherry glasses. Yes, one's in the trifle and two are in me. <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Henry Grant Hopkins. Oh, oh, oh. Your name, madam? Lady Weeble Abel Smith. <laughs> Pardon? Lady Weeble Abel Smith. Lady Weeble Abel Smith. <laughs> Your names are. <laughs> Your pardon. The name, so I can introduce you. Ernest Granger. <laughs> the name of a Burke, you're supposed to be impersonating your Burke. <laughs> oh, ah, ha. Sir Richard Ryan. Yeah. Sir Richard Ryan. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is Lady Weeble Abel Smith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you all have a lot in common with Henry Grant Hopkins here. You both went to Eton. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Sir Richard, Sir Richard, you, you don't have a glass. Uh, Stephen. Lord and Lady Stableforth. <laughs> Message and we come from Monte Carlo before you could say knave. Oh, <laughs> I don't think you know Lord Stableforth, nay, have I can't on him. <laughs> Is your daughter not with you? Oh, you mean our Lavinia? Yeah, she just tartened herself up in a powder room. <laughs> the Honourable Lavinia Stableforth. Well, hello. <laughs> Did you go to Monte Carlo as well? Oh, but of course. Do you know, I won around about £5,000. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Humphreys. Don't talk to me! <laughs> I put the regular on number nine. I bent down to light the pilot light and poof! <laughs> Get away with my life. They're not ready for the soup. They've only just started the sherry. Well, go and tell them their dinner's ready. They've just started the sherry. I have been slaving over that house stove for an hour now. I am not having my dinner ruined by a lot of drunken men. Now you finish up this soup. <laughs> My prawn souffle is ahead of itself. In two minutes, it'll be ready. <laughs> oh! <laughs> she said, Greeny is our lavvy. <laughs> she puts out with Rudy and with flying colours, I can tell you. Oh, yeah, me and the old Dutch were dead proud of her, weren't we, darling, eh? A bit coffee nose now, but she's like a wild animal when she's round. If your daddy does that again, I shall have to give him a belt round the mush. <laughs> well, do be careful, waiter, you've spilt some. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, I'm... I'm very... I'm... I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> What on earth 
are you doing? My souffle's got out of control. <laughs> and they should start the speeches. Right, you go and tell them. You're the head waiter. Yum. And in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to draw your attention to the difference between myself and all the other speakers. I am a self-made man, and I got where I got through hard graft, as like did Mr Gracia. He's been on for ten minutes. If he doesn't hurry up, my bon surprise is doomed. <laughs> Go with his spirit, I say. Stay with age and experience. And keep Mr Grace here, head of this great company, and tell Lally and Willits to go and take a running jump of themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let us keep this spirit. This spirit, what he has got here, what was the spirit of Drake <laughs> and Raleigh, and it made England the great place it was, as it will be again. Are you with me, brothers? Yeah. <laughs> right, and we will not be taken over, will we? No, no idea. No. Right, well, there you are, then. That's it. Well, 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 done. well done, Mr... What's his name? What's his Lord name? Stableforth. Oh. Well, well done. Well done. Yeah, well, now, I would like to put one further thing to the vote, and that is on moot that young Mr Grace here takes us out for a decent nosh at the Brest restaurant in a town. Yeah. Would you believe it? They're all going out to dinner. Oh, well, that's typical of men. The minute the dinner's ready, they want to go on somewhere else. <laughs> go and ask them if we're invited. You're the head waiter. You're the shop steward. So I said to Harold at number 10, I don't want the others to think that just because I've seen you right with the dustbins that I'm going to get a peerage. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I hope that your invitation extends to those who've worked so hard for you behind the scenes. Yes, of course, Stephen. Oh, thank you. You're very no. kind, Your Lordship. Yes, well, all I've got to do is to put a phone call in and I'll let you eat with the staff in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm not eating in the kitchen. They won't even let you in unless you straighten your pinny. <laughs> 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 